Hello! Welcome to the next episode of The Art of Modern Art. Last time, we learned how to draw a comic book hero in colors. So, today we're going to go back to the standard graphite drawings, and I'm going to teach you how to draw a caricature like a professional, like they do at Disney. As you all know, I was a professional caricature artist at the many Disney resorts, and I drew faces of customers live, professionally, at the locations. And I, not gonna brag, was rather good at it. However, I didn't like the hours, so I stopped. Um, so today I'm going to be teaching you how to draw a caricature. We have here printer paper. Uh, we have gone back to printer paper. I still love it. I still recommend it. And today we're going to be using this packet of things here. So let me just, uh, that open. Okay, now that we have our utensils, this is pretty much all we're going to be using for this. Uh, you don't need much. Um, we have a 6B, a 4B, and a 2B. When shading, you want your pencils to say B, anything B really. It's, uh, it's what you want to go for to get the best shading. Okay, so I'm going to start with the lightest B, the 2B, and we're going to draw our uh, shape. Let's just do Brad Pitt. <laughs> um, why not? So when you're caricaturing a face, you want to think about the face that you're caricaturing and think about what makes it unique, what makes it different from, from other uh, faces. What makes that person's face unique? And when thinking about Brad Pitt, um, Brad Pitt has a very wide jaw. That is probably his most prominent feature, other than his deep blue eyes. Um, but his jaw is very wide. Most people would call it square. So when you're drawing a square jaw, you don't actually want to draw a square. Turns out when people say someone has a square jaw, what they mean is more of a trapezoid. So we're going to draw a trapezoid as big as we can right here. Okay, there's our trapezoid. Now as you can see, it's very dynamic. We have our line here, we have our line here, and we have our line here. Now, Brad Pitt's face is going to go somewhere in here. So, what's the next big feature on Brad Pitt's face? It's his forehead, right? He's got a rather prominent forehead. So we'll mark his forehead right here with some parentheses. That'll be where his forehead goes. Um, his ears, what, what's special about his ears? They're very, very tiny. So we're gonna make a tiny little ear here and we're going to do kind of a side view of his face a little bit, so you won't be able to see the other ear. All right. What's special about his nose? Correct. Absolutely nothing. He has a very standard nose. It's just right there. It's very normal. It's right in the middle. We're just blocking in everything here, so you don't have to worry about it looking fancy or anything. Brad Pitt almost always has facial hair. 
it's very, 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 very rare for him not to have facial hair. So when I do facial hair, I take my pencil like this. I grab it almost like a fist and I just kind of unwrap my hand like this, like a gorilla palm. You see that? Like gorilla. Gorillas walking around, they hold their hands like this. So I take the pencil and I just press my gorilla palm down and I angle my hand like so and I use the pencil like this. So we're just gonna give him a whole lot of facial hair. Just a whole lot of facial hair all the way around his face. And let's give him a mustache. Same process there. All right, now let's give him a mouth. His mouth will go somewhere in here. Um, he's got really, really thick lips. V very uh, oddly thick for, for a man of his um, nature. So let's give him his thick lips. And draw like a coffee bean for for thick lips. And uh, he's got eyebrows, so we'll we'll block those in. And he's got both shifty and large eyes at the same time. It's very, very weird. It's probably how he got so famous. His eyes are both shifty and large. See? I just drew a shifty eye and then I also drew a large eye. Remember, we're exaggerating things here, so it's going to look a little different from reality, but somehow more like reality. That's the whole point of a caricature. He also has long hair half the time, so I'm just going to give him some long hair. I'm going to start right here at his little widow's peak and I'm gonna just gonna go all the way back and down like that so do the same thing but I'm gonna outline his head do the same thing and now let's add some feathering similar to the facial hair and let's do the, the part in his hair up here same process. Let me just outline that. Okay. And now let's do a bumpy outline of his face to get his forehead, brow ridge, cheek, and outer jaw. Forehead, cheek, outer jaw. Oh, brow ridge. Excuse me. Forehead, brow ridge, cheek, outer jaw. Easy enough. All right. Um, he's kind of looking up, so we're going to see his, uh, his nostril. Um, I'll just fill that in. Now we can get to the fun part, the shading. So take your 6B. That's the darkest one I have. And I'm going to shake it up a bit. Oh, no. Okay, I'm going to take my 4B and just going to just going to go dark where I think it should be dark. So maybe here. It's usually dark on a face and maybe the other side for symmetry. Uh the pupils are very dark. Don't draw the full pupil, draw a C shape. It makes it look much more real because it includes the highlight. All right, now we're gonna darken the mouth of the line for the mouth. Um, the mustache, the hair, the neck. Um, just darken it all up. All right, now take your your tortillion and just rub it. Just rub it all over. 
the key here is to to get to get shady. Okay, now we're gonna take one of our charcoal sticks. Well, all right. Just get all your charcoals out. Grab the softest one, and just uh, just uh, go at it. You know, darken those areas as much as you can. Just, just, uh, just darken it up. Same area as we did before. When I'm darkening my drawings, I like to picture uh, the darkest things I can think of in my mind to help me with the process. And then if I get too glum, I'll start picturing really bright things, really happy things to try to cheer myself up. Um, sometimes it works. Do the same thing with your torch, tor, 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 tortellini. If you don't have a, to, a, to, a turtle, then you can uh, get some paper and roll it up. It actually works really well if you can get it tight enough, like a real one. Then I just take my hand and I rub it across, and you'll lose all your highlights, but that's fine because then you just take an eraser. And you erase what you want to keep. You just, uh, you just, uh, you just erase and it's fine. It fixes it. All right. Add some neck here for him, some collar. Okay, so now that you've got your drawing, uh, get your pan. I'm just gonna use water this time, cause who cares? Get a nice even layer. You guys know that. And uh, my hand got wet. Now we're gonna take our drawing, submerge it completely into the water, like so. Just let it soak. Try to get it all the way under, completely. And you'll see the changes. Uh, they'll start to happen. It's quite beautiful. Probably should have poured more in there. All the excess, just wipe off. And, uh... Your caricature should look much better after soakage. Um, I don't need paper towels. All right. Uh, okay. All right, and here's your uh, your caricature, fully rendered. Uh, isn't that nice? And that's how you draw a, uh, a caricature like a pro. Have fun with it, and uh, let us all know in the comments uh, what you think of mine, how it turned out, and who'd you get. So, farewell audience. Art out.